Hi. Hello, it's me. As the god of lies, Loki has kept a few secrets under his belt. You might want to take the stairs to the left. Being a staple of the Marvel Universe for so many decades gives you a few advantages in the powers department, being that your many incarnations and storylines can provide a ridiculous arsenal of abilities. With the Loki solo series coming soon to Disney+, Plus, we should be able to see this villainous god shine, giving us the opportunity to see some new abilities that have yet to be displayed on the screen. So here we are, a sample pack of some of Loki's powers he may just be keeping under wraps. Please sign to verify this is everything you've ever said. This is absurd. In the MCU, Loki can do this with the use of the Space Stone. But in the comics, we deal with a whole other level of power. Loki in the comics verse can teleport at will. No artifact needed, he can just do it. A power that many of us wish we had in day-to-day -day life. No transit, no walking, just instant transportation. He doesn't even have to wait for Heimdall to notice him. This power isn't just for around the palace either, no. Loki can teleport across dimensions. If he had that power when Thanos grabbed him, well, maybe he'd still be around and kicking after the blip. If you really think about it, it's strange that Loki can just communicate with all beings across all universes. It's unlikely that everyone just speaks English. Why do these Norse-inspired aliens even speak English in the first place? So that's where all speak comes in. All speak or all tongue is a language that's recognizable to all beings, hearing it as their own native language. With that, it can be assumed that Loki is just well-versed enough in languages to understand them back which isn't too much of a stretch when you consider that the sons of Odin were raised to be princes. Understanding the language of other beings is just a part of the curriculum. Even Thor has some basic language skills, being able to understand Groot pretty easily. Who speak Groot? Yes, the total on Asgard. It was an elective. I am Groot. Multilingualism. If you've lived as long as they have, you got to have picked up a few languages along the way. This would come in handy a good many times in the past when Loki has been imprisoned, but hey, it seems like sometimes he fully means to get caught as it lends itself to his plans. Why me? I need your unique Loki perspective. Also, this power takes a little more effort on his part. In the comics, Loki has access to the Norn Stones, magical items that he uses to cast some of his magic. When faced with a trial that involved him making his way through a great many spikes and thorns, he simply cast a spell and walked right through them. This isn't the only time he's taken a ghost-like form to avoid obstacles, performing this feat without the use of magic artifacts. We haven't seen this yet in the MCU, as all of those wall-walking feats were done by some of his illusionary forms, but maybe soon. Now this is a power we've seen Loki use, but not in any way you'd expect. Being able to move things with your mind seems like an amazing thing to utilize in battle. But the only peak we've had at this magic is in Thor The Dark World. The blast he projected from himself when overcome with emotion is a clear display of telekinetic ability, something he has in spades in the comics world. So he does have it in the MCU, and maybe it'll come in handy during his time with the TVA. So we've seen this power before, but it's not something we consider when talking about Loki's abilities. This guy is super strong. He is a frost giant after all, raised on Asgard as a godling. He has a good amount of combat training, and even if he is weaker than Thor, that doesn't mean too much. In the comics, Loki is said to be able to lift over 20 tons, and that's no small feat. He can certainly hold his own against a good many heroes, even having strength comparable to Captain America. Being an otherworldly being puts you on a different level. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. But even the weakest Asgardian would likely be at superhero level on Midgard. Ironically, in the comics, this is an ability Loki does not have, but we have seen it directly. In Thor Ragnarok, Loki manages to pull forth memories from Valkyrie's mind while viewing them. Surprise! This would be considered mind reading, even if it does require physical contact. Other than that instance, we haven't seen too much of the ability being used. It would be incredibly useful as an interrogation tactic, honestly. Pretty much removes the need for interrogation in the first place, something that could come in handy during his solo outing. Mischief can be managed so much easier with the aid of invisibility. So we shouldn't be shocked that that's another part of Loki's arsenal. He's displayed this power before, sneaking around the S.H.I.E.L.D. compound during the first Thor film. He hasn't used it too much since that moment though. In the comics, it's just another piece of magic. Though his reincarnated teenage self does have a magic coat that gives him the power of invisibility, woven from a material called Shadow Thread. Fashionable and practical all in one. This one has been confirmed by Thor in Ragnarok. As we know, Thor quite likes snakes, and Loki used that to his advantage. 
But even though such a story was said in the canon, we have yet to see Loki turn into any sort of creature on screen. He transformed himself into a snake and he knows that I love snakes. He's shown off his shape-shifting form of taking on the visage of several characters, including Captain America quite a few times. But not animals, not yet, at least. He was a raven for a good amount of time in the past, following along his younger self as an advisor. Turning into animals is a pretty cool superpower. Some heroes base their whole persona on such a strength, but it's merely a footnote in Loki's repertoire. Now turning yourself into different creatures is one thing, but turning other people into animals is something else holy. Superheroes often have the power to manipulate their own cells and molecules, but moving around the form of another person isn't usually a power heroes possess. This is much more in the wheelhouse of sorcery, but fortunately, that's something that's right up Loki's alley. The clearest example is Thor, the Frog of Thunder. Thor had quite the time as a frog, still wielding Mjolnir in his tiny frog hands. Just adorable. This is one very specific spell, but the ridiculous of this one deserves a mention. Loki decided to mess with Deadpool, so he gave him a new face, the face of the famous actor Tom Cruise. Likely spelled that way for legal reasons. So how is this a punishment? Well, Wade Wilson got really sick and tired of people asking for a picture or an autograph. Even the villains he was fighting were asking. And he tried to ruin the face, but no matter what he tried, he couldn't destroy the chiseled actor's mug. Making something fully unbreakable is pretty impressive, a fun party trick, and a creative curse. Events like these are why he's called the God of Mischief. Loki isn't the first villain that comes to mind when you think a symbiote. But he has merged with one of these powerful aliens in the King Thor storyline. And this isn't just any symbiote, it's the first symbiote. The original. Klintar, aka All Black, aka the Necro Sword, functions similarly to the symbiotes we know in the modern day, but this one usually takes the form of a sword. But it can still communicate with its wielder, take different forms, and slowly tries to corrupt the host. So even though Loki, dubbed Loki the All Butcher, became more powerful with this weapon, it did soon leave him for the god of god butchers. Hey, but he could do it, and if symbiotes ever make their way to the MCU, Loki is a good candidate for a host. Move over, Doctor Strange, there's a new Sorcerer Supreme! Who? You see, a competition was held to see who would hold the new title, but honestly, that part didn't even matter. It was a little rigged. It was decided that the position should no longer be held by a mortal, and so Loki was given first prize. He does fit the bill. Loki is one of the more powerful magic users in the multiverse, so he's earned it. Yeah, sort of. For some reason, Loki likes to ensure things go according to plan. Crazy thought. And in order to make sure that things fell into line as he wanted, he did monitor himself. His younger self, actually. He had some fun dropping through time to make sure his fate lined up with what he wanted and what he expected. This version of Loki, called King Loki in the comics verse, didn't need much to go travel, just his own magical power. The upcoming series will likely show more than a handful of time travel escapades. You picked up the Tesseract, breaking reality. I want you to help us fix it. But likely with the tech provided by the TVA rather than Loki's power. Easy to control if it's by technology. Also letting Loki skip around the time stream of his own volition seems like a big risk. That's too much strength for our MCU virgin, but maybe he'll make it there one day. Meet the powers that his comics counterpart wields. Only time will tell. Having a great voice is indeed power, and I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. Are you making your voice deeper? No. <laughs> a weird tidbit, if anything. But it's noted that Loki has a good voice, being a fan of show tunes in the comics. Specifically songs from Wicked. In the Agent of Asgard series, he has his own little version of The Wizard and I that he sings. It's very sweet. Makes sense that a musical about a green magic user with a bad reputation would appeal to him. We're not expecting any sort of musical episode in the Disney series, but would not be fully opposed to it. If Vision can play the ukulele, Loki can sing a few show tunes. Yes, it's funny. It's absurd. Now this is not so much a hidden ability as it is a weakness, but it's certainly a strange tidbit nonetheless. Loki cannot cast spells while in water. No, not underwater, just while in it. Water for some reason negates his magic. An odd weakness, but a useful one for heroes to exploit while trying to defeat this wily character. It's also noted here that he probably can't swim either. Someone get this god some water wings. Let's hope swimming isn't a challenge he has to overcome while working with the TVA. This is something that a very old and world-weary Loki can do, so it can be brushed off as something the MCU's Loki could still gain in the future. Necromancy, the ability to raise the dead, conjuring an army of skeletal or zombie-like warriors to serve you. A pretty wicked villain move if I do say so myself. So why shouldn't an ancient godly sorcerer have this power? Loki used it to turn two of the sharpest men I know into his personal flying monkey. Well, he should, is the thing. 
and King Loki has earned his stripes in the magic department to use one of the more taboo forms of magic. It's the end of the world in this timeline, let him have his fun. Gonna blame this one on godly powers and borderline immortality, but losing your head is usually a pretty strong loss, but Loki will just pick up his head and keep going. When they say he has the determination of a cockroach, uh, they aren't kidding. Just like the legend of the Green Knight, if you take his head off, he will likely return the favor. Just don't be so sure you can screw your noggin back on as he can. We know the MCU Loki isn't this resilient, he was taken down by Thanos with just one hand. No resurrections this time. Loki was decapitated by a god previously and still bounced back. Maybe the Mad Titan is more godly than we thought, or Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a few more limits. Gonna go with the latter pitch for now. This may not seem like too crazy of a power, but having the patience to play the long game is what has granted Loki some of his greatest victories. And patience, he had to have. This guy spent over a century whispering into Ego the living planet's ear. Over a century. That's a long time to sit and do one thing over and over again. Paid off in the long run, eventually driving the Celestial crazy and allowing Loki to take the Necro Sword for himself. Best things are worth the wait, and thanks to this godly lifespan, Loki has quite a lot of patience. Now this one is an accident, but still an interesting mistake. The Lady Sif, a renowned warrior of Asgard and powerhouse in her own right, she's always been an object of envy in Loki's eyes. She's just as strong and imbued and glorious as his brother, but she wasn't even in line for the throne. So he does what any petty child would do, he cuts off her long golden hair. But maybe this is not well received. I'm Loki, you may have heard of So he has to find a solution, right? Loki isn't the most well-liked figure. So even when he managed to get help, it still backfired. Sif's new hair came in darkest night, admittedly a striking and wonderful look for the hero, but a bit of a shock nonetheless. Has she forgiven him for this? Eh, that's not clear, but hey, he tried to fix his mistake, that's more than he's done for a lot of people. Add this to the list of superheroes he could just replace fully with his ridiculous amount of abilities. Sorry Ant-Man, you're out of a job. Loki can shrink and grow to an impressive size. This is likely due to his frost giant heritage, but may also just be a bit of fun magic he's learned to do. Loki's already a pain in the neck, but a giant Loki? Well, an even bigger pain. A fantastic plan in case Loki decides he wants to go kaiju on a city or something. Maybe less graceful, less scheming, but it's a good backup plan for future use. What's worse than one Loki? Well, a great many Lokis. Loki? I don't know. We've seen the copy tactic used before, in his final fight with Thor during their first film outing, but those copies were just illusions. Things simply pass through them. These copies are physical duplicates. They can hit things, be hit, actually interact with the world around them. Not just projections anymore, Loki can have an army of the one person he trusts the most, himself. Come on. What did you expect? More of an Asgardian trait rather than a flat out power, but it's an ability of his so it counts. Regular guns aren't the best item to take down a god, bullets aren't known to affect either in any way shape or form. Weapons of blunt force and energy cannons are fair game, but no guns. Loki makes a bit of sense due to his frost giant heritage, which might give him some extra thick skin. That is something we may not know. Some of the regular heroes must wish they had this power. Pietro Maximov sure would have liked it. Ooh, too soon? Something useful to be saved for later, Loki can just hand over his powers. He can just grant them to whoever he wants. This may seem like a useless ability, but if you really think about it, it's fairly clever. Maybe he doesn't want to fight Thor that day. Maybe he needs an errand done, or would rather stay at home. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. Or maybe he just wants to cause chaos by granting his magic to an unsuspecting mortal. Imagine waking up with the powers of a mischief god with no explanation or instructions. That level of magic potential is a lot for an untrained person to handle. Mischief managed there, indeed. This is one power we've actually seen quite a bit in the MCU, but it's never really been fully explained. How does Loki talk to people from far away, seeming to be there when not truly present? Well, that's astral projection to a T. A clear show of it is in Thor Ragnarok, when he visits Thor. A tossed rock shows that he isn't truly there. Ow. But he can see and hear everything around Thor. It's a handy power, especially with the reach that Loki has. Loki's ability to cross dimensions, far lengths of the universe, being able to see and respond and communicate. Combine that with the all speak and he could have information and intelligence from around the entire galaxy. But if he wants to use it to antagonize his brother, well, that's his choice. Seems like a bit of waste to me, but whatever. Now, this isn't the most likely power that Loki should possess, but he did it. He was finally able to wield the hammer of Thor, the weapon that had caused him great many pains, both physical and emotional. That honorable tool that marked Thor as a king and successor to Odin. The legendary weapon that casts lightning from the sky and imbues the bearer with great power. This artifact was wielded by a few others besides Thor, including Black Widow, Captain America, and a frog. 
So what does Loki do once acquiring this weapon? Simple, he gives Thor the beating of a lifetime. Some sweet, sweet vengeance for the god of mischief against his adopted brother. Hope it was cathartic for him. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Whether or not we get to see all these powers is debatable, but I think the excitement of seeing our favorite god of lies up to his old tricks once again is ramping up. Who knows what kind of chaos he'll get up to with access to the multiverse.